live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. covers the theCUBE in New York City for Big Data NYC. The hashtag is Big Data NYC. This is our fifth year doing our own event in conjunction with Strata, Hadoop, now called Strata Data, it used to be Hadoop World, our eighth year covering the, the industry. We've been there from the beginning in 2010, at the beginning of this revolution. And uh, I'm John Furrier, the co-host with Jim Kobielus, our lead analyst at Wikibon. Our next guest is Christian Rotatis, who's the CEO of Datamir. Um, Datamir, obviously one of the startups now evolving, on I think eighth year or so, roughly seven or eight years old. Um, great customer base, been successful. Um, blocking and tackling, just doing, doing good business. Your shirts are showing Absolutely. the data. Yeah. Welcome to theCUBE, <laughs> Christian. Right here. Appreciate it. <laughs> so well established, I barely think of you as a startup anymore. It's, it's kind of it's <laughs> true, right? I, actually, a couple of months ago, uh, after I took on, on the job, I, I met Mike Olsen, and Datamir and, and Cloudera were sort of founded uh, the same, uh, the I same year, I believe in uh, late 2009, early 2000, 2010, and uh, then he told me there were two open source projects, right? MapReduce and, and Hadoop, uh, basically, and, and Datamir was founded to, to actually enable uh, customers to, to do something with it, right? As a as an end-to-end -end platform mm. to, to help uh, getting data in, uh, create the data, and, and doing doing something with it. And, and now, if you walk the uh, the show floor, the yeah. it's a completely different landscape now. Well, we've had you guys on before, and the, the founder mm -hmm. um, Stefan has been on. Um, interesting migration. We've seen you guys grow from a customer base standpoint. You've come on as the CEO to kind of take it to the next level. Give us an update on what's going on with Datamir. Obviously, the shirt says "Show me the data, uh, show me the money." Kind of play there. I get that. That's where the money is. The mm -hmm. data is where the action is. Real solutions, not high in the sky. We're now in our in our eighth year of this market, so. There's not a lot of tolerance for hype, even though there's a lot of AI that's washing true. going on. But yeah, it's what's going on with you guys? So I, I would say, so I, I, interestingly enough, I met with a with a customer, prospective customer, uh, this morning, and and this was a, a very typical organization. So this is a, a customer that's uh, insurance was an insurance company, and they're just about to to spin up their their first Hadoop cluster to uh, actually work on on customer management applications, and they are uh, overwhelmed with uh, with the uh, with what the market offers now, right? So there, there's 27 open source projects, there's dozens and dozens of other different tools that try to, uh, that try to basically, uh, they try best of reach approaches in certain layers of, of the stack for, for specific applications, and they don't really know how to stitch this all together, right? And if I reflect from a, from a customer meeting at a, at a Canadian bank recently that has very successfully uh, deployed um, applications on the data lake like in fraud management and in compliance applications and, and things like this, they still struggle to basically replicate the same performance and the service level uh, agreements that they are used from their, uh, from their old uh, EDW that they still have in, in production, right? And, and so everybody is now going out there and trying to figure out how to get value uh, out of the data lake for the business users, right? And, and there's a, a lot of approaches uh, that these companies are, are trying. There's SQL on Hadoop that supposedly doesn't, doesn't perform properly, right? There is other solutions like Olap on Hadoop that tries to emulate what they've been used to from, uh, from, their, from their EDWs. And we believe these are, are the wrong uh, approaches, so we want to stay true to the stack and be native to the stack and offer a platform that really operates end-to-end -end from ingesting the data into the data lake to uh, curation and uh, data uh, preparation of the data and, and ultimately building the data pipelines for the, uh, for the business users. And this is certainly something. So yours is more of a play for the business users now, not the data scientists and the statistical modelers? I, the, I, mm. thought, that, I thought the data scientists were your, your core market. Is that not true? So our primary user base is data media used to be like until last week where the data engineers in the companies are basically the people that uh, that built the data yes, lake, yes. that created the data and that built these data pipelines for the uh, business user community no matter what tool they were using. That's Jim, I right. want to get your thoughts on this um, uh, for, for Christian to address. Last year, um, so these guys can, can fix your microphone. I think you guys fixed the microphone for us, is your piece there. Uh, but I want to get a question to Christian, but I'll ask redirect through you. 
Gartner, another analyst firm. Um, I heard of them. Yeah, <laughs> not a big fan <laughs> personally, but you know they're still in business. They get the magic quadrant, and they they use that tool. But anyway, they had a good interest stat. So in, in they, last year, they predicted by through 2017, 60 percent of big data projects will fail. So the question for both you guys is, <laughs> did that actually happen? Um, I don't think it did. I'm not hearing that 60% failed, but we are seeing the struggle mm. around analytics and scaling analytics um, in a way that's like a, a DevOps mentality. So, so thoughts on, on this 60% mm. data projects fail? I, I don't know whether it's 16%. There was another statistic that said there's only 14% of Hadoop deployments on production 60, or something, or, or whatever. I find failure. I mean, you I, build I, a data lake and yeah. maybe you're not using it immediately for any particular application. Does that mean you fail? Do you, you, or does it simply mean you haven't found the killer application yet for it? Well, I don't know. So I, I, I agree with you, it's, it's probably not a, not a failure to that extent, it's more like how do they, so they dump the data into it, right, they, they build the infrastructure, now it's about the next step data lake 2.0 to figure out how do I get value out of the data, how do I go after the right uh, applications, how do I build a, a, plat a platform and a tool set that uh, basically uh, promotes the, the use of that uh, data throughout the business community in a meaningful way. Okay, so what's going on with you guys from a product standpoint, you guys have some announcements Let's get to some, some of the Absolutely. latest Absolutely, so I think we were very strong in, in data creation, data preparation, and in the entire data governance around it. And uh, we, we are using, as a, as a user interface, we're using this uh, spreadsheet-like user interface called, called the workbook. It, it really looks like Excel, but it's not. It is, it operates at completely different scale. It's basically an Excel spreadsheet on, on steroids. And, and our customers uh, built the data pipeline, so this is the data engineers that we discussed before. But we also had a, a, a a relatively small power user community in, in our client base that used that spreadsheet for deep data exploration. Right. And now we're lifting this to the to the next level and we put a, a, a visualization layer on top of it that runs natively in, in the stack. And uh, what you get is, is basically a, a visual experience, not only in the data curation process, but also in, in deep data exploration. And this is combined with uh, two uh, platform technologies that we use. It's based on uh, on highly uh, scalable distributed uh, uh, search in, in the backend engine of our product. Number one, we, we have also adopted uh, a columnar data store parquet uh, for yeah. our file <coughs> system now. And uh, in this combination, the, the data uh, exploration capabilities that we bring to the market will allow uh, power analysts to really dig deep into the data. So there's literally no limits in terms of uh, the, the breadth and the depth of the data. It could be billions of rows, it could be uh, thousands of, uh, of different attributes and, and columns that you're, that you're looking at and you, you will get a, a response time of a sub-second as we create indices on, on demand as we uh, run this through the analytic process. With these fast queries and, the, and visualization, do you also have the ability uh, to do semantic data virtualization roll-ups across multi-cloud or multi-clusters? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we, we also, there's, there's a second trend that we discussed right before before we started uh, the, the live transmission here. Uh, things are also moving into the cloud, right? So what, yeah. what, we are, what we are seeing right now is the EDW is not going away, the on-premise data lake will prevail, right? And, and now they're thinking about moving uh, certain workload types in, into the cloud, right? And, and we understand ourselves as a platform play that builds a data fabric that really really uh, ties all these data assets uh, together and it em enables uh, business users. So on the trends, we, we, we were, on, went on camera, we'll bring it up here, Cl the cl impact of cloud to the data world. You've seen this movie before, you have extensive experience in this space, going back to the origination, you can say Teradata. You know, when it was the, the classic, you know, old school data warehouse, and the great purpose, great growth, Absolutely. massive value creation. Enter the Hadoop kind of disruption, <laughs> Hadoop evolved from batch, to do ranking stuff and then try to, it's kind of, it was a hammer and that turned into a lawnmower, right? So it's like, it, then it started going down the path and really wasn't workable for what people were looking at. But everyone was still trying to be the teradata of whatever. Okay, so fast forward, so things have evolved and things are starting to shake out. Same picture, data warehouse-like stuff, now you got cloud. It seems to be changing the nature of the, what it will become in the future. What's your perspective on that evolution? What's different about now and what's the same about now that's from the old days. And so what's, what's the similarities of the old school 
and what's different that people are missing? So I, I think, so not related to cloud, uh, just in general, it is extremely important uh, to, to foster adoption throughout the organization, to get performance and, um, and service le level agreements right with our customers, right? So this is, this is where, we, where we clearly can help and we give them a, a user experience that is meaningful and that resembles what they were used to from the old EDW world, right? Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, uh, and, and this comes back to a question, do 60% fail or, or work? No, is, is it failing or, or working? Uh, I think uh, there, there's a lot of really interesting projects out there and customers are, and our customers are betting big time on, on the data lake projects, whether it being on premise or, or in the cloud, right? And we work with uh, HSBC, for instance, in the, in the United uh, Kingdom. They've got 32 uh, data lake projects throughout the organization. And I spoke to, spoke to one of these. Uh, not, not 32 data lakes, 32 projects that involve tapping into the data lake. The 32, data, 32 projects that involve various <laughs> okay. data lakes, right? <laughs> and so, <laughs> and, and I spoke to one of the, mm. the chief data officers there and they, they said their, their uh, data center infra infrastructure, just by having kickstarted these projects, will explode. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're not in the, in the business of operating all the, all the hardware and, and things like this. And so a, a major bank like mm -hmm. them, and a, they made an announcement recently, a public announcement, you can read about it, uh, are starting moving the data assets into the cloud. So, so this is uh, clearly, uh, clearly happening at, at rapid pace. And it, it will change uh, the paradigm in, in terms of breathability and being able to uh, satisfy peak, lo uh, peak workload requirements as they come up when you run a compliance report at, at quarter end or, or, or something like this. So, so this will certainly help with adoption and creating business value for our customers. I mean, we talk about all the time, real time, and, and there's so many examples of how data science has changed the game. I mean, I was talking about, uh, from a cyber perspective, how you know data science helped capture uh, Bin Laden to how I can get increased sales to you know better user experience on devices. So having real time access to data and you putting some quick data science around things really helps things in the edge. What's your view on real time? Obviously that's super important. You got to kind of get your house in order in terms of base uh, data hygiene and foundational work, building blocks. But at the end of the day, the real time seems to be super hot right now. Re real time is a relative term, right? So, so there's certainly applications like uh, IoT applications or um, machine, machine data that you analyze that require real time uh, access. I, I would call it right time. So what's the increment of, of data load uh, that is required for certain applications? We are certainly not a real time application uh, application yet. We can. Uh, possibly load uh, uh, data through Kafka and, and you know, stream data uh, through Kafka, but in general we are uh, still a batch-oriented uh, uh, batch oriented uh, platform. We can do... Um, Which, by the way, is not going away anytime no, soon. No, it's, it's, it's not like going away important. at all, right? Yeah. We can do many batches at, at relatively frequent uh, increments, which is uh, usually enough for what our mm -hmm. customers demand from our platform today, but we're certainly looking at, uh, at more streaming types of capability as we move this forward. What do the customer architectures look like? Because you brought up the good point, we talk about this all the time, batch versus real time. They're not mutually exclusive, obviously. Good architectures would argue that you decouple them, obviously have good software uh, elements all through through the, the, the life through cycle the of stack. data, through the, and have a stack, and the stack's only going to get more uh, robust. Uh, your customers, what's the main value that you guys provide them, the problem that you're solving them today, and, and the benefits so, for them? So, Absolutely, so uh, our true value is that there's no breakages in the stack, right? So we are end-to-end, -end. We, can, we, can we can basically satisfy all requirements from ingesting the data, from uh, uh, blending and integrating da the data, preparing the data, building the data pipelines, and, and analyzing the data, right? And all this we do in a highly secure and, and governed in environment, so if you stitch it together, so uh, customer, the customer this morning asked me, so whom do you compete with, right? And getting this uh, question, uh, all the time and uh, we really uh, compete with two things so we compete with build your own which customers still up to do uh, nowadays while our, our things are really point and click and uh, highly automated and we uh, compete with a combination of different products right so you need to you need to have at least three to four different products to to uh, be able to do what, what we do, but then you get security breaks, you get uh, lack of data lineage and, and data governance through, uh, through the process, and this is the biggest 
biggest value that, he, that we can bring to the table. And, and secondly, now with uh, visual exploration, uh, we, we offer capability that literally nobody has in the marketplace where we give yeah. power users the capability uh, to uh, explore uh, in, uh, I with uh, blazing fast response times, billion rows of, uh, of data in a very uh, free form type of exploration process. Are there more power users now than there were when you started as a company. It seemed like tools like Datamir have brought people into the sort of power user camp just simply by the virtue of having access to your tool. W what are your thoughts there? Absolutely, it's, it's, it's definitely growing and you see also different companies uh, exploiting that capability in, in different ways, right? You, you, might, you might find uh, insurance or uh, uh, financial services uh, customer that uh, customers that have a uh, that have a very sophisticated uh, capability built in in that area and you might see a, a thousand or two thousand uh, users that do uh, deep data exploration and, and other companies are starting mm -hmm. out with a couple of dozen and then evolving it as as they go christian i got to ask you as the new ceo of data me i should go on the next level you guys been successful <laughs> You know, we were commenting yesterday on theCUBE about, we've been covering this for eight years in depth, obviously with the CUBE coverage. We've seen the, the waves come and go of hype, um, and, but now there's not a lot of tolerance for hype. You guys are one of the companies I will say that, you know, stay to your knitting. You didn't, you didn't overplay your hand. You certainly rode the hype like everyone else did, but you got, your solution is very specific on value, and so you didn't overplay your hand. The company didn't really overplay their hand, in my opinion. But now, there's really the, the hand is value. So absolutely, as the new CEO, you got to kind of put a little shiny new toy on there and you know, rub the, you know, keep the car looking shiny and everything looking good with cutting edge stuff, at the same time scaling up what's been working. So the question is, what are you doubling down on and what are you investing in to kind of keep that innovation going? So, so there's really three things, and you're, you're, you're very much uh, right. So this, this has become a mature company, right? We've grown with our customer base, our enterprise features and capabilities are second to none in, in, in that marketplace. This is what our customers achieve, and, and now the, the three investment areas that we're putting together and where we're doubling down is really visual exp exploration, as I, as I outlined uh, before. Uh, number two, hybrid cloud architectures. We don't believe the customers move their entire stack right into the cloud. There's a few that, that are going to do this and that are looking into these things, but we, will, we, believe in, uh, we believe in the idea that they will still have their EDW, their on-premise data lake, and uh, some workload capabilities yeah. in, in the cloud, which will be uh, growing. So, so this is investment area number two. Um, number three is uh, the, the entire concept of data curation for machine learning. Um, mm -hmm. th this is something where we've uh, released a plugin earlier in the year for TensorFlow, uh, Flow, where we can uh, basically build data pipelines for machine learning applications. Mm -hmm. This is still very small. We see some interest from, from customers, yeah. but it's growing interest. And, and they're it's a directionally it correct kind of vector. You look at it and say, okay, yes. this is a good sign. Let's kick the tires on that and play around. Because machine learning's got to learn too. We gotta, totally. <laughs> got to learn from somewhere. And quite frankly, deep learning, machine learning tools for the rest of us, there aren't really all that many for the rest of us, you know, power users. They're going to have to come along and get really super visual in terms of enabling visual modular development and tuning of these, of these, of these models. Um, what are your thoughts there in terms of going forward about a visualization layer to, to make the, the, the machine learning and, and deep learning developers m more productive. Is so that, that is an, an area where we will not engage in, okay. right? So we will stick with our platform play where we uh, focus on building the data pipelines yes. into those tools, right? Gotcha. So in the in the last area where we invest is ecosystem integration. So we think with our with our Visual Explorer uh, backend that is built on on, on, on search and on uh, on a Parquet uh, uh, file format is, or Columnar Store, is, is really a key differentiator in feeding or building data pipelines into the incumbent BI ecosystems and uh, accelerating uh, those as well. So we have we've currently uh, prototypes running where we can basically uh, give the, the same 
uh, performance and uh, depth of analytic capability to some of the, the existing BI tools that are out there. What are some of the ecosystem partners you guys have? I mean, partnering is a big part of what you guys have done with, can you name a few? I mean, the, the biggest everybody one. everybody in Switzerland that you, you don't? You no, not really. We are, we, are, we are focused on, on, on staying true to our stack and how we can provide uh, value to our customers. So we, we work uh, actively and very, very important in our cloud strategy with uh, Microsoft and uh, Amazon AWS in evolving our cloud strategy. We've uh, started working with various uh, BI vendors that are out there that, that you know about, right? And, and we definitely have a play also with uh, some of the big uh, big uh, SIs and IBM as a more prominent So the BI one. guys are mostly on the tool visualization on side. On the you tool and visualization side, right? We, we have very effective integration uh, for our data pipelines into the BI tools today. We support uh, TDE for Tableau. Uh, yeah. We have a native integration into yeah, why Microsoft Power. Yeah, why compete there, just be a service uh, provider. Ab absolutely, and we have more and better technology come up to even accelerate uh, those tools as well in a, in a big data. Uh, so you're focused, stack. you're scaling. Final word I'll give absolutely. to you for the segment. Share with the folks that are uh, a data mirror customer or have not yet become a customer. What's the outlook? What's the new data mirror look like under your, on your leadership? What should they expect? Yeah, ab absolutely. So I, I think they can expect uh, utmost predictability, the way how we roll out the division and how we uh, build our, our product in the next couple of releases. So then the next five, six months are critical for us, right? We have launched Visual Explorer uh, here at the conference. We're going to launch our native cloud solution probably mid of November uh, uh, to the customer base. So these are the big milestones that will help us for our next, uh, for our next fiscal year and provide real great value to our customers, and that's uh, what they can expect. Predictability, uh, a very solid product, all the enterprise great features they, they need and require <coughs> for, uh, for what they do. And, and, and if you look at it, we, we are really an uh, enterprise play, right? And, and the customer base that we have is, is very demanding and, and challenging, and we want to keep up and, and deliver a uh, a capability that is relevant for them and, and helps them create values from the data lakes. Christian Rodatis, technology enthusiast, passionate, now CEO of Datamir. Great to have you on theCUBE. Thanks, Thanks for sharing. So much for having and we'll be following your progress. Uh, Datamir here inside theCUBE, live coverage, hashtag Big Data NYC, our fifth year doing our own event here in conjunction with Strata Data, formerly Strata Hadoop, Hadoop World, eight years covering the space. I'm John Furrier with Jim Kobelius here inside theCUBE. More after this short break. Thank you.